a small military town in Sweden's frozen north, is on course to produce Europe's first commercial green steel. Giant diggers and excavators are pouring through layers of mud, ice and snow at the site of new steel plant just outside Budin, which is 900 km north of Stockholm. Steel is usually made in a process that starts with blast furnaces. Fed with cooking coal and iron ore, they emit large quantities of carbon dioxide and contribute to global warming. The production of steel is responsible for around 7% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. But in Woden, the new plant will use hydrogen technology designed to cut emissions by as much as 95%. Although the first buildings have yet to go up on the remote site. The company behind the project, Edge to Green Steel, believes it is on course to roll out the first commercial batches of its steel by 2025. If it succeeds, it will be the first large-scale green steel plant in Europe, and with its products used in the same way as traditional steel to construct everything from cars and cargo ships to buildings and bridges. Although much of Europe's steel-making industry dates back century, Edge Green Steel is a startup that did not even exist before the pandemic. When Northvolt opened Sweden's first joint electric battery factory two hours south of Boden, it wanted to find a greener way of producing the steel needed to make the batteries and HD Green Steel emerged as a spin-off with funding from two of the North Pole's founders. The centerpiece of the new steel plant will be a tall structure called a DRI tower. DRI means a direct reduction of iron. Inside this, Hydrogen will react with iron ore to create a type of iron that can be used to make steel. Unlike cooking coal, which results in carbon emissions, the byproduct of the reaction in the DRI Davo is water vapor. All the hydrogen used at the new green steel plant will be made by H2 Green Steel. Water from a nearby river is passed through electrolyzer, a process which splits off the hydrogen from water molecules. The electricity used to make the hydrogen and power the plant comes from local fossil-free energy sources, including hydropower from the nearby Lille River as well as wind parks in the region. This is a unique spot to start with. You have to have the space and you have to have the green electricity, says Ida Lins Nazilius, Vice President of Environment and Society at H2 Green Steel. H2 Green Steel has already signed a deal with Spanish energy company Everdrola to build a green steel plant powered by solar energy in the Iberian Peninsula and says it's exploring other opportunities in Brazil. On home soils, it's got friendly competition from another Swedish steel company, Hybrid, which is planning to open a similar fossil-free steel plant in northern Sweden by 2026. This firm is a joint venture for Nordic steel company, SSIV, mining firm, LKAV, and energy company, Vattenfall, boosted by state funding from the Swedish energy agency and the EU's Innovation Fund. While Sweden is leading the way when it comes to the carbon cutting steel production in Europe, it is important to put its potential impact in context, says Katinka Lund Wagseither, a senior policy advisor at the Brussels-based climate think tank E3C. 
adds to green steel hopes to produce 5 million tons of green steel a year by 2030. Global annual production is currently around 2,000 million tons, according to the figures from the World Steel Association. The production capacity in Sweden will be a drop in the sea. But other benches should help increase the proportion of green steel available in Europe. These include Gravity HY, which plans to open a hydrogen based plant in France in 2027. German steel giant Tyson Group recently announced it aims to introduce carbon neutral production at all its plants by 2045. Europe's largest steel maker, ArcelorMittal, and the Spanish government are also investing in green steel projects in northern Spain. Meanwhile, the European Union is the process of finalizing a new strategy called the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, designed to make it more expensive for European countries to import cheaper non-green steel from other parts of the world. By 2050, hydrogen is expected to account for 10% of global energy consumption. Thanks for watching this video till the end and do subscribe to the channel get the latest update on construction videos.